In this tutorial, you'll learn how to edit your interactive simulations in Storyline 360. Now, in the previous tutorial, we recorded and created our interactive simulations, and we took a look at how Storyline takes each screen action and then moves that into its own slide. In this tutorial, it's all about editing and polishing up those screen recordings. And here's what I mean. One thing you'll notice when you move your mouse around software is that there's a lot of visual cues. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to bring open the PowerPoint file that we worked on. All right, so you notice that as I start to mouse over the interface here, you see the, the little rollovers here indicating that these are clickable tabs. As I mouse over the buttons here on the menu, these are all giving highlights. And as I, I click into each one, you see that there's a, some visual feedback, just some basic hovers that indicate that there's a, uh, a button to be clicked. Now this works really well for live software, but when you're recording software simulations, a lot of times the transitions or these little artifacts get stuck, meaning that the screen recorder doesn't really know when to stop or when to start recording. And if I jump back into Storyline, you'll see what I mean. You see how we're on the Design tab, but this very first step was uh, click on the Insert tab. Right, you see how the Insert tab is just a little bit shaded differently than the other tabs? That's just because uh, Storyline had picked up the hover state when I moused over the insert tab. And if I click here, yep, you can see how the shapes tab is also highlighted, indicating that this is where I need to go. Now this might work well for like a, a show me or a practice, but if you're trying to test a learner on their knowledge of a process, this kind of gives it away, right? I can look at this screen and immediately know uh, where I want to go. And let me show you a really extreme example. So if I click on the animation for preview, Right? So watch this. Up. Oh, well, that didn't go very far. Remember how the shape is supposed to come all the way to the top and uh, show how this flies in? Well, it stopped right there. Now, the really great thing is, is that this is really easy to fix in Storyline 360. So let me show you. All right, so here we are on our slide, and we looked at how the hotspots work in the uh, previous tutorial. But let me show you how this works for editing. I move this hotspot out of the way, you see that there's the shading right there for the insert button, right? That's, that's where we want you to click. Well, uh, Storyline picked up the hover state for that. Now, rather than having to create screenshots and cover this up and go back and, 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 and kind of fake it, right? Just by adding some covers or some, uh, some cover screenshots that have this in a different state, we can add it this right here in Storyline. And here's how that works. If I right click anywhere on my video, down here, I have this option for action fine tuning. Now, when we create the screenshots, when Storyline creates the screenshots for each of these slides, it's actually taking it from that source video that you recorded, which means that you have access to every single frame that you captured. So right here, when we see that the, that little hover state is um, being active, all we need to do is update either the start or end frame to show this interface before it actually had the hover state. In this case, I'm just going to go back a few frames. So I can click previous frame, previous frame, and you see how the mouse just moved off? Now, if it's really extreme, I can always drag this. And that, that might be fine too, right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking frame 115 versus 128. But notice right here, and it's a little small, I know, I know, but you don't see that hover anymore. And let's go to the next slide. Just click the next slide, and of course I can access all the slides from here from the drop down. And there's the shapes tab. You see how it's highlighted? Even though I'm not on that slide here in Storyline, I can still access all the slides from the action fine tuning window. So in this case, I'm going to move it a couple frames before, and you see how the mouse just moved over. Now don't worry about the cursor, right? Because the cursor is removed when you do these uh, these activities. So even though the cursor is showing, it's not going to show on the slide, just like it didn't show in our original recording. And that's it. And so you can just step through each of the slides and there it is on the rectangle, right? Let's just move it a little bit back. So that one's kind of hitting everything. This might be a good one to just move. There we go. Just grab it back a little bit farther. Now I want to show you the final one. And this is um, uh, really the extreme example and that was the animation. So I'm just going to jump all the way down here to the preview page. So here's where it ended, right? And that's the start frame. If I come down to the end frame, you see where it's ending? And this is what this helps us with is the show animation, right? Because it was an animation, I need to update that end frame. So in this case, we can just drag this end frame all the way out. There we go, see? To where the animation stops. And now that animation is going to play when we view the slide after we uh, click that step in the, uh, in the uh, simulation. 
Now at any point, if you mess up, you can just click reset original timing and it puts it right back to where Storyline guessed that it should be. So you always have access to this video, right? So even if you make these changes, you still have that source video so you can revert back to um, whatever you originally captured. So in this case, I'm just still gonna move this all the way up. All right, go ahead and click OK. It's gonna make the updates to the, to the simulation slides. All right, so let's go ahead and just preview our new uh, slides, our new simulations. So preview, preview the scene. Okay, so here's our updated screen simulation, right? So here's the insert tab. You see when I hover over, I still see the caption, but there's no background, there's no hover state that's showing through. Same thing here with the uh, click the shapes grid, right? There's nothing indicating it like it was before. And then same thing with the rectangle. And I think that's as far as we got right here. Now let's go ahead and check out the uh, preview, right? This was the animation. So here's where it starts. And then when I click preview, the animation should continue all the way to the top of the slide like we set it up initially. All right, so there it is. Go ahead and close our preview. All right, so let me show you one more trick that you can do with action fine tuning. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up right here. So let's say you needed a screenshot anyway. You wanted to cover some things up or maybe you wanted to hide some sensitive or confidential information or you just wanted to uh, touch up the interface more than just the start and end frames. If you have action fine tuning up, you can just right click and you start to have, you now have some options for either grabbing that source video of the entire MP4. You could export a clip, right? So if you just wanted a small clip of the, um, uh, the, the start and end frame, you could export that clip. You can save a frame at the project size or the original size, right? So the original size would be that, the, the bigger size that you recorded. Project size is the current size it is here in Storyline. So you don't have to just open up one slide. You can actually scrub through, right, the entire video and find that frame you need to export. Right click, choose same frame, and you're gonna grab frame 875. So it's a really great way to get a high quality screenshot without having to, right, just take a screenshot of the slide. And it's a lot more precise too. So just another option for working with uh, action fine tuning to uh, fine tune your slides. That's really all there is to it. Go ahead and give it a try in the practice files. Try doing some animations in PowerPoint. That's one of the easiest ways to test how those interfaces, those modern interfaces work and how they create artifacts with, uh, with software simulation. But it's really easy to fix using action fine tuning. All right, so if you have any questions, go ahead and please post in the forum and we'll be more than happy to help you out.